Okay, in the last video, we wrote a finite state machine, this thing, to implement this. Now, let's simulate it. You know, you, you want something to actually see, make sure that this is doing the right thing. So let's go right click, add to project, new file. We're gonna call this example fsm underscore tb for test bench. And it's gonna be a system Verilog file. And so the first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna set the time scale. The time scale is gonna be one nanosecond over one nanosecond. What that means is that, you know, when we're feeding inputs to this thing, we're gonna want delays, right? So we're gonna give it a clock, one of the inputs that we've defined here. And we just need a, a certain time period to set the frequency for that. Um, then we're just gonna create a module called example FSM TB. So we're gonna create a few variables that are the inputs and outputs of the FSM. So the first one is just gonna be clock. The other one is just gonna be reset. And then for the input, which we've called x here, we're just gonna call that in. So I'm just gonna call this logic in, and that's gonna be what we're feeding into the FSM. And then we're gonna have another variable called logic out, and that's just gonna be the variable that contains the output of the FSM. What this is, this is actually when we wire it together. So we say example FSM, and then you say DUT, that just stands for device under test. And then now we're saying, okay, the clock wire of the FSM we're gonna feed that with our variable clock. The reset wire, we're gonna feed that with our variable reset. The X variable, we're gonna feed that with our variable in. And then the Y is fed with our variable out. Then we close that off and yeah, this is, you know, this right here is the wiring connecting these two things together. And we're gonna say end module here and I'm just gonna compile it, make sure everything's working. Okay. and. We're gonna have two categories. One's gonna be always, and I'm gonna say begin and end. <clears throat> so first we're gonna say our clock goes high, and then our clock goes low, and that'll keep going. But we need to you know, give it some delay here, so we're gonna say <clears throat> wait for five nanoseconds, and then go low and wait for five nanoseconds again. And so our full period's gonna be uh, 10 nanoseconds. So that's what's gonna be going on always. But then we're also going to have a thing called here called initial and this is only going to happen once but it's going to happen sequentially and this is where we're going to feed it in our values um, so the first value we're going to feed in is reset we're going to say that should be one which means we're just going to stay here and we'll say wait a period so wait um 10 nanoseconds and then we're going to set reset equal to zero and we're going to set the in equal to zero and we're going to wait 10 nanoseconds what that should do is it should go okay Reset's off, we can start to move. In is zero. Hey, next cycle, we're gonna go to we're gonna go to B here, right? And so we can start to give it some more values here. We can say, all right, what else is gonna happen? Now let's simulate it, all right? So does it go simulate, go to view, um, and then go library. And you you see this work folder here. You wanna expand that out and you'll see your test bench. And you wanna go right click on the test bench, not on the FSM, go simulate without optimization. And that'll do some fancy stuff. It'll bring up some stuff you haven't seen before. And then you go right click here in this objects pane, right click, add to wave signals and region. And that'll create this wave thing. And now if we go back to our model sim, we go simulate, run, run 100. Let's go back to our wave. And hey, look at that, it's doing a thing. Okay, so now let's zoom in on that. And you can see, hey, it ran for 100 nanoseconds. And you can see, first, reset's high. And it's like, oh yeah, first, reset's high. Also, first thing, we didn't really specify what in should be, so it's this red. Next cycle, we say, okay, reset's low, in's low. Boom, it's low. Next cycle, we say, in's high. So in's high for the next three cycles. Cycle, cycle, cycle. Then in's low. In goes low again. And you can look at the input here, right? So what happens? Let's trace it. And this is kind of painstaking to do, which is why I left those spaces. But what happens is reset's high, so we're here, okay? Then we can set reset low, so it goes, okay, what am I doing next cycle? The input is low, it's zero, so next cycle, I'm going to B. Um, and so it says, okay, I'm still outputting zero at this cycle. And now we're here, and the input is now, now gone high, so it goes, okay, next cycle, I'm going to, going to one. So it goes, awesome. Then boom, next cycle gets to one, the output changes from zero to one, and it's outputting one. Input is high, so it goes, okay. So while it's here, it's saying, all right, what am I doing next cycle? Well, my input's one, that means I should go to C. So then boom, 
hits next cycle, hits C, open a zero again. But that's kind of painful, so I'm just going to stop this. And in our test bench, we're going to include that. We're going to we're going to check for that in the test bench itself, so we don't have to like go in and look to see if it's making sure everything is happening exactly how we want it to happen. So beforehand, we go all right. Here, we know that the output should be zero, so we're going to go assert that the output equals zero. And if it doesn't, throw an error saying big problem at zero. Okay, so I added some more inputs to walk through some more states, and I added some more asserts. So now, if we rebuild everything, we go compile all, and we go to library, again, right click, simulate without optimization, right click, add to, wave, signals and region, there's your wave, simulate, run 100. <clears throat> but you can see, in our output, we had an error. Big problem at six times 70 nanoseconds. So we go, hey, 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 what was happening here? So we go to our finite state machine, the test bench, and we look at number six. So, hey, six, it was supposed to be zero. And what was it? Well, we can look at this. We can say, okay, this happened in 70 nanoseconds. I mean, you and me, we know, hey, well, if it was wrong, it was just one, but you might have a vector or integers or something more complicated. And so, but let me just update this here. We go, big problem at six. We say, okay, that should be a one then. And now we can just go compile, compile all, simulate, and then you just go restart, yes to all that stuff, simulate, run your 100, and then go back to our wave. Well, first of all, I mean, I could just see the, the error is not there anymore. Um, so, I mean, I don't even really need to look at the wave, but there's our wave anyway, and isn't that great? Uh, well, no, not really, because, I mean, look at this code. This is atrocious. The last thing you want to be doing is copying and pasting the exact same line, having to increment this from 0, 1, 2, 3. I mean, even for a FSM this big, you don't want to be doing it like this. What you want to be doing is what I'm going to show you in the next video, which is creating a test vector that you can just feed into the FSM, and it'll, it'll output at exactly what inputs were wrong. So if you want to see how that happens, go find the next video.